Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day you give us. Thank you so much for your love for us, God, and that the, uh, the fact that you would put breath in our lungs is amazing, Father. Uh, God, we thank you for that. We thank you for all the wonderful things you continue to do in our life, Father. We've got 15 people signed up to be baptized this morning, Lord. We've got uh, a whole children's department that's going to be uh, uh, leading our worship this morning, God. And, Lord, help it to be just that, Lord. We're not looking for a performance, God. We're not looking for an opportunity to take a picture, God. We're looking for you to show up this morning in our church. I pray you'll start right now through this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we'll be in uh, uh, just a few verses. Uh, if I had a title today, it would be uh, Second Place Ain't That Bad. Uh, we, uh, we tend to get... Uh, there's all kind of sayings about second place. Second place is the first loser, and uh, you know, all these kind of things. But in this situation, second place is not uh, that bad. Uh, in Philippians, we uh, the writer of Philippians is uh, Paul, the apostle. He uh, wrote this letter to the church of Philippi uh, from a Roman jail cell, uh, and we'll, we'll begin reading in verse 19. Uh, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send uh, Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Uh, for I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Uh, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Uh, but ye know the proof of him, that as a son with a father he hath served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send uh, presently, so soon as I shall see uh, how it will go with me. Uh, but I trust in the Lord uh, that I also uh, myself uh, shall come uh, shortly. Have, have you ever had somewhere you just really wanted to go? I mean, uh, uh, not from a uh, from a, uh, a selfish desire, but from a desire to serve somebody. I'm not talking about a Hawaiian vacation or, or something like that. But uh, there's just somebody you really need to go see. There's uh, uh, something you really need to be doing. Uh, and has there ever been that time that you just really needed to get to somebody, but you couldn't? Uh, something was hindering you uh, from getting there, and there's absolutely uh, no way for you to be there uh, on time. I, I used this personal example in, in a message a, a few Sunday nights ago uh, when I preached, but I, I remember when, uh, uh, this is a little different application today, I remember when Bryce had her accident down in uh, West Point. Um, she uh, called me and said, I've just been in an accident. Uh, she was, uh, sure enough, shook up and scared, uh, but I could tell through that she wasn't really hurt. Um, uh, but this, uh, unfortunately, I was in Fayetteville, Georgia. I was uh, at least two hours away from her. And she said, I need you to come down here. Uh, but at that time, it was impossible for me to get there. And as, as any good father figure or, or daddy would want to do, they want to be there for their child. They want to get uh, to where they need to be. Uh, and so I thought about the people that I knew in West Point, uh, in that area, and I started running down a list of who can I call. I called Darrell Hogan. Uh, he was in a meeting. He didn't have his phone. He wasn't able to answer. Uh, I called Scott Hamner, who was... Uh, uh, out of town at the time, and I didn't know that. And uh, uh, the, the very next thing that popped in my head was uh, Mitt Smith, who was the fire chief in West Point, a good friend of mine. And I said, Mitt is who I need to be there with her because I can't be. And so I immediately called him. He went and was there with her. Uh, and my, my point is this, uh, just not anyone would do. She wanted me to be there, but I couldn't be. And so in my mind, I'm not just gonna call uh, just anybody. I'm going to call somebody that I know uh, can be there in my place and can do uh, what I can't do because I couldn't be there. And so I called a trusted friend who I knew would do that. Uh, Paul had a similar issue here uh, in, in Philippians. He had a, uh, uh, and I understand that Paul's situation is much more important on a level of world importance uh, than Bryce having a wreck. I get that. Um, um, from a worldview, from a spiritual view, Paul's situation is much more, uh, much bigger than my situation was, but it's a personal example of a, of a similar situation, so that's why I give that. Uh, again, Paul's in prison, uh, but he longed to be with the church at Philippi. He knew of their faithfulness. He knew how, 
how they were, uh, uh, there were some young Christians there trying to do what was right, but there were some people there uh, that, that had some issues and were needing to be put back right, but, but he got a love for this church, and that love uh, made him want uh, to be there so he could encourage those people. And he had, a, as we see in two occasions in verse 19 and 20, uh, Paul had a genuine concern uh, for their state. Uh, the, uh, the King James Bible uses the word state in verse 19 and 20. Uh, uh, he wants to know their state. And then he, then he says in verse 20 that he, he, he cares for their state. And so, uh, since he couldn't go personally, he had to call someone that he trusted to go. I mean, he's in prison. It ain't like he could get a leave of absence and say, I'll be right back. Let me run down here right quick. So he had to go. Uh, uh, he had to find somebody he could send. And he, and he wanted that to be a trusted person, and that person was Timotheus, or who we, who we call Timothy. Um, Timothy was a, a man that Paul trusted to be there for him when he couldn't be. He, he was that, that, that man that he called on. And, and I'll stop there and say this. If anybody ever calls on you to be there in their stead, consider that an honor. And if any way possible, do it. Because it means they trust you enough uh, to be there in their place. It's, it's not that uh, uh, anybody would just do. I, I'm thankful when I go out of town that, because uh, uh, I have to leave sometimes on a moment's notice and just have a couple hours and we may have some different stuff going on. Uh, but I'm thankful that, uh, you know, less than half a mile away is Ray McDaniel. And, and I know within a, a matter of minutes that Ray will be at my house or something is needed by my girls and I also know that, that Warren Brooks is just a mile down the road and every time I leave Warren calls me he says hey I know you're leaving if you need anything call me if you need anything just uh, let, let me know and there's been occasion where Amber and I was out of town and Warren had to go uh, check on Bryce and, and help her through some things and, and same thing for uh, Ray and Pat they've had to come help us out too so it's good to have people you can call on in your stead and when you have to do that Consider it an honor. Uh, don't consider it a burden or uh, every time they need something, they call me. Well, if that's the only time they call you, then maybe, yeah, you may have a point there. Because uh, there are those people too. Uh, but, uh, but it's good to be trusted. It's good to have somebody that can depend on you uh, to be there for them. And it's also good to be that person. So uh, when, we're, when we're striving to have our hearts challenged, to be a better person, to, to live a better uh, Christian life, uh, uh, there's nothing uh, quite as good of an example as other people. Uh, other people, uh, this word is full of other people, right? Uh, this word is full of people who make good choices, people who make bad choices, uh, people who, who've done right, people who've done wrong. Uh, and nothing will ignite that fire in us like the example of somebody else. Uh, when you see a good friend of yours who may have recently lost a lot of weight, that may encourage you to, hey, I might want to lose a little weight. So. None of my friends have lost weight lately, so. Um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Timothy, uh, our, our text scripture gives us a good example, a wonderful example of a person just like that, a person that's totally uh, committed to Christ, Timothy. Uh, I don't know how much you've studied Timothy. I, I haven't studied Timothy a whole lot uh, up to this point, uh, but, but Timothy uh, was a man that Paul trusted. Uh, and, and that's who we need to be, a man that, that other people can trust. Uh, Timothy was a young man who willingly served in second place. He didn't need the spotlight. He didn't need uh, to write 14 books of the New Testament like Paul did. Uh, not that anything's wrong with Paul for having done that, but that's not Timothy. Uh, Timothy didn't strive to be like Paul. Timothy strived to serve Christ under Paul, and he was okay with that. Uh, serving in second place is a privilege, and it should be considered a privilege because the second man uh, uh, not only gets to lead those people under his responsibility, uh, but he also gets to contribute to the life and the ministry of the person above him. Um, there's a song, it's a southern gospel song that uh, I, I definitely won't sing it, but I don't even know the words to it, but the point of the song is this, I would like to, I would like to meet the preacher who led the preacher that led me to Christ. Um, and, and do you think about things like that? Because uh, whoever led you to Christ, uh, 
whoever led them to Christ is going to get credit for them leading you to Christ in God's, in God's uh, way of doing things. And what a blessing it is that, that I, I can look back and I can see that uh, 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 Tom Owensby led me to the Lord at Highview Baptist Church when I was 13. And uh, uh, Tom Owensby will receive rewards uh, for the things that happen at Emerge uh, that, that I, I may uh, uh, get rewards for. He will also be rewarded for that. Uh, uh, and so it's, it's okay to serve in second. It's okay to be second to somebody. We always are striving. The, the, the business world, the corporate world, will teach you to be on top, right? you got to be on top. you got to be the man. Uh, well, in the spiritual sense of things, that's not always uh, the best thing necessarily. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, this portion of Paul's letter, and I want to break down a couple of these verses and, and help us to understand Timothy just a little bit better. Uh, and, and please, by all means, through all of these books, you'll see, uh, through all of these uh, New Testament epistles or letters, you will see uh, several comments about Timothy. Timothy uh, and Ephroditus are two people that you might want to search out in your own time. Uh, Ephroditus, his story is talked about right after this story in Philippians chapter 2. But, you know, the, the three things we'll talk about about Timothy. One, uh, Timothy was like-minded as Paul. If we look at verse 20, uh, Paul said, For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care uh, for your state. Uh, the, the, the great apostle Paul, the most famous preacher of Christ, I say ever, to this day, I say ever, Paul was uh, the most famous preacher of Christ. And, and, and Paul, being the most famous preacher of Christ, had no man, the Bible says, no man like-minded as him, uh, like Timothy was. He didn't trust anybody like he did Timothy. Uh, Timothy was the closest resemblance of Paul in many ways. To, uh, uh, he thought like Paul. He had the same spirit as Paul. He had that same vision that Paul had for the church, for the early church, uh, the same ministry and the same compassion as Paul. Uh, but I want you to notice this. The, the most important thing that sticks out in verse 20 uh, is that Timothy done all these things naturally. Uh, uh, verse 20 says, uh, For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. You know, we, we can be coached into doing some things, right? We can be coached into doing work for God, right? I mean, you probably wouldn't uh, ever go out on your own to support some starving kid across the ocean. Uh, but at those concerts where they bring those pamphlets and they show you these pictures of these kids, uh, you're kind of, uh, 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 I'm not saying that's wrong to support those children, it's not, but you're kind of enticed to do that, right? I mean, before you went to that concert, you, what, you your plans at night when you got home was not to go find some kids you could support every month. Uh, but because they coached you to do that, they talked you into that, so to speak. And again, that's probably not the right way to say that. I'm not saying anything bad about this thing. Timothy done what he done naturally. It came to him naturally. He wasn't doing it to try to be like anybody. He wasn't trying to do it for the notoriety. Uh, he didn't have to be taught to be like-minded as Paul. It just came to him uh, naturally. His heart naturally cared. Uh, again, it's one thing for us to care about a situation because it gets brought to our attention. It's another thing uh, to see something on the side of the road and then care for it, right? Uh, you think about the uh, Good Samaritan, right? Uh, nobody had to tell him to care for the man in the ditch. That came to him naturally. And that's the way uh, Timothy is here. These things are, are natural for him. Uh, people in your life that naturally care for you are your truest companions. It's those people who ask you how you're doing uh, even though you may have a smile on your face. It's those people who may uh, stop by to lend you a hand even though you may not be asking for them. Uh, those are your uh, truest companions. It's not those people who just come around when things are good, right? It's not those people who just come around when they want something. Uh, no, it's those people who are around through the good times and the bad, those people who naturally love you for who you are uh, with all your junk and with all your baggage and with all your problems and uh, with all your snotty those kids and, and with all that stuff, and they still love you and want to be with you, those are your truest companions. And that's who Timothy was to Paul. Paul's in prison. Timothy's still doing the work. Um, uh, number two, Timothy 
uh, denied himself. He, he, he had no problem denying himself. Uh, he was willing to do that for one reason and one reason only. So he could be obsessed with Christ. I want you to think about that, that word obsession. That, that obsession is when, when, when you can't think about nothing else but this one thing, right? Where, where everything else you see reminds you of that one thing. That's called an obsession. Sometimes an obsession is a bad thing, right? We can become obsessed with our job. We can become obsessed uh, uh, with uh, somebody of the opposite sex that we shouldn't be. We can become obsessed with uh, uh, circumstances. We can become obsessed with our fear. Uh, but Timothy chose to be obsessed with Christ. Everything he saw, he looked for Christ in it. And he was obsessed with that. Uh, Paul put all the other preachers on notice. And believe me, there were uh, probably all kind of preachers following after Paul to try to, Paul, let me preach tonight. I, I, I've, been, I've been studying a long time. I've been following you for a couple weeks. Let me preach tonight. I want to I preach tonight in front of all these people. But Paul put every one of those other preachers on notice in verse 21. He said, for all seek their own, uh, not the things uh, which are Jesus Christ. He's blatantly just saying here that every other preacher except Timothy is in this for themselves. Every other preacher uh, that, that Paul has met that's come behind him uh, are doing these things uh, because they're seeking their own well-being. They're seeking their own self-pleasure. They're, they're looking after themselves uh, more than they are others. Uh, they, they, they may present themselves one way, but at the end of the day, all they really wanted was attention for themselves. And Paul was real quick to put those preachers on notice. They want their own uh, com their own comforts, their own position, their own acceptance, their, uh, their own following, and their, their own possessions. Uh, that's why they're doing the things they're doing. Uh, they're more concerned with themselves uh, than they are the things of Christ. Now, does that not sound familiar today with some of these TV preachers we hear about? We got one in New Orleans now taking up donations for a big old jet plane. Right? Does it not sound familiar that that's the pot of preachers we have to choose from? Uh, that there are a whole lot of them getting rich off their congregants while their church sits in ruins. I've heard a, a pastor say this before. If, you're, if your home looks better than your church, you got some problems. That's right. Um, uh, uh, Dennis uh, Farr told me the story of when he went to Papua New Guinea and that he um, he got to the village that he was going to be preaching in that week and he wanted to see the church and, and he had his uh, his uh, interpreters with him and the people, the missionaries who brought him over there uh, and, but as they walked up to, uh, and over there the church is next to the, the home of the pastor uh, always. You got the church and then the home. Well, when he got there uh, the pastor of that, of that local church in that village said, I want you to come see my home. I want you to come see my home. And the interpreter said, well, we want to go see the church. We want to go see where we'll be preaching first. Oh, no, 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 no. Come see my home. They just talked about how much nicer the home was than the church. The church was just a couple of bamboo sticks and a piece of tin over it. And the, the home had tile floors and all this nice stuff. And, 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 and it's true there and it's true here. Uh, we need to take care of our church better than we take care of our own home. Uh, especially uh, as, a, as a pastor or as a church, we need to be, be looking at things that way. We need to care about the things of Christ uh, more than we care about our, about our own things. Number three, uh, Timothy was willing uh, to be discipled. Uh, Timothy wasn't going to be some uh, self-proclaimed theologian. That was not his goal. He understood that he needed to learn. He understood that he uh, didn't know it all. Uh, he understood that there were some things that uh, Paul uh, could teach him. And Timothy wasn't just some cellmate of Paul who was getting out before Paul, and Paul said, well, you can go till I can get there. No. Timothy had been with Paul uh, since back in Acts chapter 16 on Paul's second missionary journey. That's where they met. And, 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 and Timothy and Paul traveled uh, all over, uh, all over the place, and and, and Paul uh, taught him the things. Uh, he helped him to become the great preacher that he was. Uh, Paul referred to Timothy as son uh, uh, twice uh, here, and also in First Corinthians chapter four, he referred to him as his son. We, we know he was not his biological son, 
Um, but that was the closeness they had. That was the bond that them two had. So it wasn't just some fly-by-night friend that he could get there. Uh, Timothy had been proven in his ministry. He, he wasn't some rookie uh, preacher. He, he, he had been proven in what he was doing. He was a strong man of God. He served with Paul not only in Philippi, but in Thessalonica, and Berea, Corinth, and Ephesus. He, he served the same place. Uh, ten, uh, Paul also sent Timothy to Thessalonica and Corinth because he couldn't go. You see, when you're willing to be discipled <coughs> by somebody else, when you're willing to do that, to submit yourself uh, to someone else's, someone else's authority, that they might teach you the things of Christ, when you're willing to do that, that means you're also willing to be proven. Uh, so many people, uh, uh, again, right quick, I'll, uh, I took Bryce to, uh, she was ready, she, right after this wreck, uh, so to speak, it didn't really fall that way, but that's how it is. Right after this wreck, she needed a new car. So we go out looking for her a new car. Well, we go get in the Nissan, something or another, she liked the way it looked. We want to go look at it. And the guy that's doing this, the sales guy, who's we're on this test drive, and I say, well, she really likes the Toyota Corolla. I said, so tell me why she should buy this car over the Toyota Corolla. His answer, well, it's a Nissan. Okay. G give me a reason I need to buy this car instead of this one. Oh, it's got this safety feature and that safety feature. I said, no, I, I need a better reason. It's eight hundred dollars cheaper. No, that's not a good reason. He, he didn't believe in what he was doing. I could tell that from the beginning. He's just reading off his little paper that he has there. He didn't believe in what he was selling. Yeah, he didn't know anything about the car that he was trying to sell us. Same thing is true here. There are a lot of preachers and a lot of teachers who who who, who, who get saved. They have a genuine salvation. They uh, they they see. Uh, some man above them spiritually, so to speak, uh, not, not, not in a sense of position, but in a sense of knowledge. And they say, I want to be like him. Uh, the very next week, they're calling themselves a preacher and they want to go preach and do these things. They haven't took the time to be discipled by anybody. Uh, and, and, and we all fall into that, not, not just preachers, uh, not just teachers, but Christians in general. Uh, the day you got saved, Yes, yeah, sure enough, the old man was uh, uh, gone and, and, old, and, new, and everything else is new. I, I get that. But it took some time, right? You still slip and said a dirty word every now and then, right? You may have still slipped and, 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 and done something you shouldn't have done that you've done in your old life. It took time uh, to get uh, to where God wanted you to be and, and to where God wants you to be uh, because none of us have arrived, right? We still are learning every day. We still fail every day. You have to be willing to be discipled. You have to be willing to have somebody come up to you and say, you know, you're messing up here. You need to do this different. And you have to be willing to accept that. You have to be willing to be held accountable. Uh, Timothy, uh, he was willing to be held accountable. And he went through the trenches to, to do that, so to speak. Now, he had a resume that was better than any other preacher uh, besides Paul. Timothy did. Uh, but he done that through hard work and through faithful service. He didn't do that overnight. So Timothy is a great example. He teaches us, uh, one, it's not okay to be in first place. I mean, it is okay not to be in first place all the time. It, it is okay. We don't always see that. Uh, but it's important to realize you don't always have to be in first place. He also teaches us that denying yourself and becoming obsessed with Jesus pays off big time. It pays off in God's time. And three, he also teaches that we all need to be learning from someone that's serving Christ. Uh, we all need to learn from someone. Uh, whatever your job is, somebody taught you how to do that job, right? You didn't walk in day one and know, uh, Warren, you didn't walk in to Coweta County day one and know everything there is to know about firefighting. No, somebody had to teach you that. And somebody's still teaching you that every day. Same thing with our Christian walk. We get comfortable. We get to a place where we're comfortable. And we get to a place to where uh, uh, we think we need to be, and we stop. We stop learning. We stop studying. The problem is when we get there, we become stagnant. If you're not careful, 
you'll start falling backwards, right? You know, we need to have somebody that can help us be a better servant of Christ. Find that one person in your life if you don't have them and, and allow them to, to help you uh, be that person. Uh, Timothy was a faithful friend. Sure enough, he was. But he was even more faithful at serving Christ. And Paul recognized that when he chose him to go be in his place. Uh, he, he was fine being in that position of, of second bed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, this lesson, Lord. It seemed to go pretty quick, God, but I, I hope that the three points uh, stuck with somebody in this room like they stuck with me, Lord. And I pray, God, that you'll uh, help us all, Father, to uh, uh, to always uh, be like-minded as, as other Christians, Lord, to always be like-minded as Christ. Father, I pray you'll help us to uh, deny ourselves, Lord, and just uh, sell out to you if we're not, God, and that we will, everything we do, Lord, will be 100% dedicated to you, Father. God, I pray every one of us uh, find somebody, Lord, that can disciple us, Lord. Uh, God, we get to a point where we think we're too old to do something, we think we're too busy to do something, uh, God, and that's a dangerous spot to be in, Lord. Help us all to uh, learn every day, God, to, uh, to find that one person that we need to trust in, Lord, and uh, to be held accountable by a father. And, and God, we just pray that you'll uh, receive the honor and glory for it all, God. I pray as we go up into service this morning, God, that you'll uh, go with us, Father, that your spirit will uh, rain down this morning, Father. God, I pray for our children, Father, that, God, you'll take away all nervousness, Lord. You'll take away all anxieties, Father, that they'll just worship you, God, in, in spirit and in truth, Father. Lord, I pray today, Lord, you'll help us to be the light, God, in this darkness, Lord. Help us uh, to obey instead of rebel, Father. Help us to, uh, God, just to love instead of hate, Father. God, help us to believe and not deny, Father. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.